Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Brett Park and in today's video, we have something really fun and fresh happening. Today, I'm giving y'all a final warning on what to expect before going to art school. And if you're already in art school, these are some tips that actually help me do my best and guide myself through the process of going to a four-year university at USC Rossi School of Art and Design. So if any of this at all interests you, even the slightest teeny bit, keep watching, babes. A little disclaimer before I get a bit negative Nancy on y'all. I feel like I don't need to go over the great aspects about art school because you probably already exaggerated all of that in your college essays. You've already seen everything in these productive aesthetic vlogs from RISD, Pratt, Parson students in New York. So let me just give you all the real tea on art school. Now it's March, so that means a lot of people are committing to colleges right now, getting their acceptances, and also figuring out their life plans over the next course of their life. And yes, I've made a lot of videos on this before, but I have more shit to say, babe. I always have more shit to say. Always. Now the first thing you're probably wondering is like, oh my god, who is this person on my screen telling me what to do? What are their credentials? They have crazy hair. Like, should I listen to this person? The answer? Maybe. Maybe. But if you want to know my credentials, babe, just go to my CV, brettpark.net. Yeah. But I will give a little more context. I currently go to USC. I'm a senior studying art and communications. I'm in the BA track, not the BFA track, because BAs are honestly way better at USC. Whatever, it's fine. So let's start with who actually succeeds in art schools. Capricorns. Not biased. It's actually people who are one, motivated, two, disciplined, three, come into art school with an open mind, four, reach out to different people, and five, have a damn backbone. So let's just break down these five things and then we'll go into a community section where I asked y'all on Instagram any advice you would give to people in the community and y'all spoke up, so we'll go through that later. So let's first talk about intrinsic motivation, which is motivation that comes from within yourself. According to this very random website I found online, um, intrinsic motivation is when you're motivated to do an activity because you find it internally rewarding. Rewarding is a key word here, y'all. You choose to do it because you find it fun, enjoyable, and satisfying, and your goal comes from within. The outcomes of this goal satisfy your basic psychological needs for autonomy, competence, and relatedness. So this is very positive, right? It's you kind of going outside, finding inspiration, and then wanting to put it onto paper. Romanticized view of art school, waking up every day, understanding, wow, this is such a privilege to be at a university. I'm so excited to just create and to take advantage of every opportunity. I'm so excited to learn. Let me just kind of absorb everything I can, which is a great mentality to have. However, there's also extrinsic motivation. You're motivated to do the activity in order to gain external rewards. Your goal is focused on outcome and does not satisfy your basic psychological needs. It involves external gains such as money, fame, power, and avoiding consequences. To me, it has to do with comparison, which will come up a lot when you are in art school. When you're in a public studio like this, let's say, in painting, you're looking left and you're looking right, and it's very, very difficult to not compare yourself with the people next to you, and so that could extrinsically motivate you to push you to do better, which could be good at first because, you know, people should be motivated to work together. That's why you have kind of collaborative studios so you push one another to be the best versions of yourself. However, it can be really toxic if you're just constantly comparing yourself with everyone else. They always say, comparison's a thief of joy, but it's honestly literally actually true, babe. They said in the definition, like, fame or power is not always, I'm motivated to sell my work and that's the external motivation is money, but it could also just be social capital, as in, I want to win this award or this achievement and and win this scholarship application. And I'm doing all of this work and working myself to the core so I'm able to get those achievements because I want that social capital and can negatively hinder your artistic practice because you're just motivated to satisfy institutions institutions being the ones that are giving you these accolades. So definitely be mindful of where you are drawing your energy from and hopefully it's the intrinsic motivation. Personally, I'm swirling around everywhere, one day I'm intrinsically motivated, the other day I'm just extrinsically motivated, but some days all of that fleets away and you're not sure what to do and that's where discipline comes in. So when you don't have any motivation, you don't want to get out of bed and work and you're not feeling any type of vibe that will get your ass up, you have to be disciplined by putting in those hours in the studios to just get the most out of your money honestly because you are paying for a four year institution so not using the resources available to you and the facilities would be not a waste but a waste. For me I feel like I was maybe not trained but borderline 
terrifying groom from a young age to be disciplined just from my cultural background being an Asian American also growing up really really heavily in sports and having to fall in line with the schedule and do the workouts do the work every single day routinely to get better and art is honestly very similar now I'm not saying to be a machine I'm not saying to not take breaks but just not fall to the wayside and procrastinate every single assignment getting caught up in parties and getting caught up in other types of social life that would totally detract you from doing your work of course of course of course this discipline looks different for everyone based on their privilege and background for example discipline doesn't mean oh every single person has to put in 20 hours of work because some people have to actually work outside of school with their work study or their other jobs and responsibilities in order to pay for college and so that's not realistic for those types of people however discipline for those people could look like putting 10 hours of work in instead of the 20 because that's just more realistic and achievable so when you set a goal of like i want to finish this project in four weeks then you start breaking up and you'd be like what do i have to get to after each week in order to achieve that goal and then you split that up by time to see if that goal is possible to achieve and if not maybe then setting a realistic goal that you're able to do in the course of four weeks based on how much time and resources you have available to you now wrapped up in all this kind of motivation and discipline because they are very intertwined do not do not do not do not babe play into the stereotypes of the obsessed perfectionist artist think um whiplash or think black swan where people go absolutely mad trying to strive for perfection or strive to be the best at something even though those are my favorite tropes honestly like i'm obsessed with those tropes on the low um and try to be like them i would not recommend it to everyone because it is so mentally damaging sometimes you will fall into like a deep little mental low state low vibration and not be able to get out of that for like months and at that point you have both no motivation and no discipline because you're so depressed that you can't even catch up to your own unrealistic expectations of yourself which is obviously set by like neoliberalism and capitalist society that we live in today expecting us to produce outcomes there's a lot to think about of where all our motivations lie and how we've been all trained to be productive in art school you will hear this from every single person it's what you make of it. It's always what you make of it. Like, not to be shady, but there are some people who are just here for the vibes, just here for the degree, which is totally fine. But if you want to quote unquote make it in the art world, you have to understand what making it looks like for you. And you have to work backwards again, splitting it up to be like, oh, if I want to have like a successful sticker shop after graduation, I need to learn how to do design. I need to learn how to do some marketing on myself, build a website. I need to know the best kind of manufacturing practices in order to maybe ethically get these stickers and then distribute them to a mass audience. How do I do all of that? What classes should I take in order to achieve that and then if that's not working for you after like a year you can always pivot pivoting is great in art school and that's why we need to come in with an open mind the amount of resources you are given in art school is so expansive and wide that you should change and allow yourself to evolve and to grow because if you're not then babes like what are you doing in art school let's say you got into art school doing only celebrity portraits that are realistic you go through four years you pay maybe like on average 50k a year for tuition and housing and everything two hundred thousand dollars gone and you're still making celebrity portraits that are realistic i hate to say it but maybe you didn't need art school maybe you literally actually actually literally didn't need art school babe you just wasted so much money so much time so much resources unless i guess like you're talking to people gaining community that's great talking to professors that's awesome but for your artistic practice it's very rare for people to know exactly what they want to do going into art school. But it is great to kind of have a feel of what you might want to do. Some people talked about this in the community section that we'll go in later on. But try to expose yourself to as many materials, as many classes, foundational classes you can do. Drawing, sculpture, installation, ceramics, etc. Because you never know where it will lead you to later. I actually, because for me personally, I came in just doing painting pretty much. Um, and maybe some web comics and animation, but I've never experimented with sculpture or ceramics. Both of those things now, oh, and performance. All three of those things have informed everything else. 
my paintings, I didn't start including like tigers or cartoons until I started actually sculpting them and then that went back into the painting. Or when I do performances, I'm thinking of different compositions I can put for the video frame and so then I go back to painting to think of what looks good and then putting that back into the video. Everything's kind of cyclical and if you train your creative mind to think differently, then you have different pockets and resources to make choices on how to better manifest whatever idea you have in your brain. Um, Billie Eilish actually talked about this before. When I was starting out, I had one way of singing, and that's how I sang. And everything that I sang, I just sang it how I knew how to sing it. And now I have all these choices and I can play with my, like, instrument. Like, I have an instrument now that I can play with. She won two Oscars now. Shout out Billie Eilish. And part of having an open mind is also pushing yourself to be uncomfortable. And this can look in a lot of different ways. It could look being uncomfortable in the mediums you're choosing. It can look being uncomfortable socially, like asking for help reaching out. Reaching out is so important and for me it's personally very uncomfortable again as a Capricorn who literally thought I looked weak, incompetent, and needy asking for things. That's not the case all the time. Unless you're like literally doing it every single project like babes like maybe chill. Reaching out for help actually builds community. It is you saying wow I actually want to ask this person for help. I trust them enough to ask them specifically and if they do help I'll love to return the favor. And when they help, if they help, I'll be able to not only hang out with them basically and maybe treat them to coffee later, have another conversation with them, and just build memories and experiences that are shared with people because at times when you are in the art studios it can be isolating especially when your practice is painting or drawing or ceramics and not photo where you have to like interact usually with another subject and this doesn't relate to just peers but also faculty faculty want to help you oh my god faculty can be stacked babes if you go to art school any art school let me just deconstruct this shit real quick a lot of people don't even know who's teaching them. I said this in like three or four videos now. Research the people who you're learning from. Understand their practice to understand where they kind of get their ideas when they are critiquing your work. A lot of them have one, been in your shoes, so they want to help you. Two, they're well connected with other people because they're constantly interacting with the rest of the faculty who may also have communities outside of the school itself and have showed with other people who you may be inspired by. Always just talk to them. Be a social person, have fun with it, like just get to know and be friends with your professors. A lot of them are chill. This is important, so like listen up. Listen up babes. When you're choosing a school and they have a big name faculty member, you're like, wow, I want to go to this school specifically because this person teaches there. Always, 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 always double check to see if that same professor teaches somewhere else at a different college. Because I cannot tell you how many people, amazing faculty members who are adjunct, meaning they're like half time, are also teaching at another, if not two other campuses in your area. Like we have an amazing ceramics professor who teaches at USC and California State LA. And let's say you wanted to go specifically because of this ceramics professor, Cal State LA's tuition is much less. It's much less. So always just double check that and be mindful of that when you are choosing your schools because you don't want to be in debt after graduation when these art schools have taught you nothing about the business side. The next thing to talk about is having a backbone. A backbone is so important to grow, develop, and work out, babes, because you will be constantly exercised on your, your patience, your self-worth, your self-identity, your self-concept, everything. Now, I know I said to have an open mind, especially, you know, if someone's giving you a critique, you don't want to be stubborn and not take their advice. You won't grow and you won't develop and you won't change. However, if someone is saying some bullshit, like, for example, let's say you come from a marginalized community and a cis, white, straight, upper middle class, able-bodied man is saying, oh, actually, you shouldn't do the work you're doing. You should speak on your identity more in your work. Girl? No. If you don't want to make work about your identity as a marginalized person, you do not have to. Why do people, especially in the heat of like identity politics and like post-identity politics, when we are so hyper aware of identity and the ideas of like labels and orders that categorize people and put them into random boxes, if you don't want to speak on that and you want to paint trees, paint your damn trees. Don't let someone completely change your practice simply because they said they didn't like your work. Personally for me, if I were to receive a critique, which I have in the past, where someone's looked at my entire studio, said, basically, I don't like any of this, but then found like a wash of like some oil gamsol strips on a canvas and said, I'm most interested in this one. Girl, like, what do you do with that? That's not helpful. Like, the person telling you that hypercritical advice 
is not helpful. At least they could tell you why they weren't interested in it, why they didn't find your composition as appealing, as, you know, enthralling. So if you get that advice, have a backbone, stand up straight, be in your feels for a bit, sit down, let it all out, cry. A good cry could feel so good. But at the end of the day, y'all, you gotta get back up. It's very cliche. The clip um, from Rocky, I think it's Rocky, where that dude is like, winning is not about how hard you punch, it's about how many times you get back up. Something like that. I'll insert the clip now. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That really resonates in art school. It really does because people will try to tear you down constantly, forever, pretty much in your artistic career, and you'll always have to bounce back and respond. And sometimes you don't even have to respond. Sometimes you just keep doing what you're doing, stay in your lane, and let other people come as they are, and just vibe. Just be a vibration, babes. Truly, honestly, actually, literally. I don't want to scare y'all. Okay, art school is so fun. It literally changed my life. Genuinely, it saved me. My community at USC really helped me with that. The faculty really helped me with that. I nurtured my art practice from literally like zero to like 90, babe. Or let's not go that crazy. Zero to 80. I went from zero to 80 real quick because I had a great community and it was so fun. I met the most amazing people, learned so much from people's different backgrounds. They pushed me to like actually go out and party when I just wanted to stay out inside. In that case, partying was good for me because I did not want to leave the studio, did not want to leave my room. You also built camaraderie and compassion with your cohort because you could be going to the same damn smelly motherfucking bathroom at Harris and bond over that bond over that struggle of having poor ventilation in the damn mother bathrooms girl girl let's talk about it okay now it's time for the community section i asked y'all on instagram which y'all should literally follow at brett paint duh i said for the current and ex art majors are there any advice you give to your freshman self first do things on time don't cram art projects to the last minute sometimes you will have to let me just be honest i've crammed many an art project and i made a whole series on tiktok about it my most viewed series ever was me cramming my art assignments and people kept roasting me in the comments but babes i was only cramming the assignments that i didn't really care about that much and for major projects and like midterms and finals i would always go all out for those but you have to definitely pick and choose where your time goes to and hopefully if you have the choice between doing our project really well that could potentially be a portfolio piece and going out to party for the fourth time this week you choose to you know be in the studio for a bit but have your fun too be stupid be stupid and fun caitlin said don't feel like you have to be the best experiment play around and discover new things yes i feel like that goes back a bit to intrinsic motivation and just doing things you want to do because you have love for it and positive energy towards it molly says to take advantage of the studio space Period, babes. Period. She also said, making effort to be friends with your studio mates, it's the biggest highlight of art school for me. I wholeheartedly agree. I literally love all of my studio mates. I could go through every single one and just like talk about things I love about them. Mainly people in my cohort because I spent the most time with them. But yeah, I try to meet everyone in the studio. Another person, everyone's insecure. I think they mean like everyone is kind of thinking about themselves and comparing themselves with one another. So again, if you just stay in your lane, you're chilling. Don't take four studio classes at once. I think I've taken max three studio classes in a semester and I wanted to literally die. So four would be crazy. Jennifer says, your art is going to suck at the beginning, but you'll be so proud of how far you've come. Totally agree. As someone who literally got rejected from every single art school they applied to four years ago to my art now, I've improved so much. I'm so grateful I didn't let the illusion of linear progress get to me. It was always an up and down, a lot of downs. But mainly, if you just keep working at it, you will improve and you will be happy with how, how much your art has grown. Try everything and consciously step out of your comfort zone, especially in the first year. Yeah, not to put a lot of pressure on y'all freshmen, but freshman year is where a lot of people make their friends. A lot of people, friend groups kind of get established. So I would just try to join clubs, join organizations, go to like the fair day at school, to just meet new people, talk to people. And especially the people who look sweet and kind that are handing out like pamphlets or something. They're always fun to talk to and they're always down to get a coffee chat. People in college love their damn coffee chats. Don't take any criticism personally. Exactly, I would not do that. Which can be hard, especially if you're working with subject matter that relates to your own identity and even your own self-image. But try to keep a distance from it. And take every single foundations class ever, even the ones you know you won't like. I agree, just try everything. But also don't go on like the crazy end and try everything and then not like grow in anything. 
Like for me, I've taken painting now four times. Love painting. I actually literally hate it, but I have to keep taking it because I want to take it and I want to get better at it. So I'm not gonna like delete a painting class simply to take another foundations course, but you should try a lot of things. Um, ask why frequently. Yes, this is so good. Always, always ask questions. These institutions don't know what they're doing half the time. They're just speaking from historical fact, which is obviously not true because history is the history is the story of the victors or whatever. Um, so constantly ask questions of yourself, of the people around you. And I found that the people who have answers and always have an answer to things are not the best artists. My philosophy on art is that you're always asking questions with your work, you're never proposing an answer. But that's just me, maybe. Stop procrastinating, bitch. Okay, work. Drop out. Work. Learn to manage your time as soon as possible. This is a great tool. This is true. This is true. Don't be afraid to make connections with your professors. Absolutely. I literally love every single one of my professors, pretty much. They're the best. Um, Alex says, never take assignments at face value. To continue the story, too often students take an assignment prop and answer exactly or predictably. Always break some rule or limit in the work, but do it in a considered way. Also, do not finish assignments for the sake of finishing them. Each assignment has the potential to be your next major work, your rent payment, your job application, etc. To be an artist in college is also to put yourself in the world. And if you just finish your homework and then get your degree, there was no point to be there. The artist's career is like a snowball, it will grow, but you must keep pushing it. Love that. And I wholeheartedly agree. My biggest project to date was something I made in 105. Art 105. At first I hated that it became kind of like this maybe like iconic piece in my personal portfolio. But now I'm just like whatever. I'm glad it happened. It gave me opportunities I didn't think I'd ever get. So I am grateful for that. And it's because I did try to put in my effort into each assignment that I did. Dayton says, don't procrastinate first year projects. Real. Very real. Um, being the most talented in the room doesn't mean the professor is gonna like your work the most. Okay, T. This is T. Especially when your talent is directly correlated with like your ego and arrogance. Like, babe, no one knows anything. We all literally know nothing. Calm the fuck down, nothing matters that much. I guess we'll end on that note. I am totally open to doing a part two. If y'all have any more questions, I will definitely be responding to every comment down below. If you like this video, like the video. If you have fun, comment, critique, or joke to share, comment down below. And if you like me, my art, or want to follow my journey as an art student in LA, you can subscribe. It's a fun time here. I really hope this video helps. And if not, maybe you listen to me while doing the dishes or something, so. Oh my God, no. This is milk chocolate covered peanut butter pretzels. And I'm highly allergic and it just went on my sweater. Oh my God. Oh, okay. I think that's the end of the video, y'all. That's in the video.